Hey everyone, welcome to the Hope NLC Holiday Special. We're gonna be working on our voting solidity contract today. So let's switch over to our smart contract. So last time we were working on this ballot smart contract where we were, where we first set up this voter struct and uh, a voter has some sort of weight, a voting weight. Uh, we wanna know whether or not that voter has voted whether or not they've delegated their vote and the vote. Um, and then we set up these proposals with the uh, 32 character name. So we want a short name so uh, we're not storing too much information. And then how many votes that specific proposal got. And then what we learned is that uh, we learned how to set up a dynamic array here with the, um, the brackets next to the capital proposal. And what that'll allow us to do is add as many proposals as are up for vote within this array. And then the chairperson who can is the one who can initiate the ballot itself. So that's where we left off and we are going to continue here after vote count of zero. So the first thing we wanna do is to give the voter the ability or the right to vote on this specific uh, ballot. So according to the documentation, uh, this is uh, a way, not necessarily the best way, but a way to do that. So we're gonna set up a function. Function give right to vote. And then we need the address of that voter. And then let's go ahead and move this up so you all can see it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to require that the chairperson is the only one able to give somebody the right to vote. And so we're going to create this check within the contract. So we're going to require that the person who is the chairperson, uh, and remember the msg.sender is the initiator. And so if, if um, the chairperson did not initiate giving the right to vote, then it won't go through. And then the next step here, set up a requirement to check whether or not the voter already voted. So we don't want people to be able to vote twice, right? So require and then what we'll say is voters of the array voter and so this here what we have with the uh, voters in, in the array of voter dot voted we have what's called a logical logical negation and it's looking to see um, whether or not the voter already voted and so what we do need here though is some sort of message for uh, the person um, giving the right to vote and um, also looking at whether or not the voter has voted. So I'm going to go ahead and just type a phrase in here. So maybe um, uh, uh, only chairperson allowed to assign voting rights and then over here maybe let's go ahead and say something um, voter already voted once. Okay. Now in this next section, what we want to do 
is give a voting weight. So in other words, um, one vote is equivalent or um, a voter has the equivalent of one vote. And we don't we want to make sure that a voter does not have uh, the equivalent of more than one vote as well. So we're going to do a check again using the require function. And then we're going to give that voter a weight of one. I'm not super familiar with DAOs, uh, but what I've seen so far in, in my short-term experience, I've been uh, watching the, the way that the ENS DNO, DAO has been managed and the way things are happening. It, it moves so quickly, it's hard to keep up. Uh, but one of the things that I've seen is this delegation function to where folks can delegate their voting power to somebody else within the DAO to vote on their behalf. And um, it's a way for you to participate in, in the DAO, but not necessarily have to keep up with all that's going on. So I have seen that. That is, it is an interesting concept. I don't know much about it. Um, I'd encourage you to dive into it and do your own research. But this function, the, the purpose of this function is to be able to do that sort of delegation. So we'll type in function again, delegate, and then address to external. And we're going, as the instructions say, we're going to assign a reference. And then the other check that I, I just wrote in here uh, is for the function to check whether or not you're delegating your voting power to yourself. So if you're delegating yourself, it's kind of, it, it just means you should vote, not delegate back to yourself. And so this is a check to make sure that uh, the delegation is not the sender itself. And these sorts of these sorts of types, you can look into the Solidity documentation and look them up. And so whenever you see a exclamation point with an equal sign following, that is an inequality. And anytime, like I said before, you see an ex exclamation point, it is a logical negation. And we'll slowly build on our understanding of these different things and, and how it works. I'd encourage you to, if you know, if there's a specific type that you want to look into, I'd encourage you to look at the Solidity documentation itself. So this next part, we're going to, oops, we are going to perform a loop as long as the two has been satisfied.
gonna do a check to make sure it's again not the self address. And one thing I forgot to mention at the beginning here is I am using Visual Studio. So uh, if you missed the lap ep last episode, I'd encourage you to go back and watch that episode so you can see how I set up this IDE. Um, after we run this, we're going to connect back to the Remix IDE uh, in the web browser and deploy and test our smart contract here. That's it. In this next part, let's see if the oops, snitter, the cinder voted equals true. Cinder dot delegates equals to probably getting to the edge here. Sorry if that went off the screen. I think I realigned it. Let's do that. Voter right. storage delegates. Equals voters to this. So it looks like, just trying to understand this as I do this, but it, it looks like what's happening here is that uh, we're creating, we're, we're storing the voter delegates uh, that were delegated by the sender. And then if delegates Voted. So what we want to do here is look if the delegate voted and if the delegate voted we need to add that vote to that specific proposal. So we'll add in our proposals delegate dot vote and then I use the wrong brackets sorry about that uh, if you recall we have our proposal array here vote count and then we're gonna add that to the cinder add the Cinder weight, which would be one, which we programmed earlier, uh, to the vote count of that specific proposal. Else, so if the delegate did not vote yet, we want to add that delegate's weight. So delegate Okay, and so now it's time to vote and I apologize, I just noticed that uh, my screen was a little too zoomed in, so I think I just fixed it and you can see what I typed from above up here uh, which was probably difficult to see before. Just scroll up and then scroll back down 
So if there's anywhere you need to pause and look at it again, you can. Looks like I have an error here I just caught, so I think I missed something there. Cool. And then let's see what's going on here. Okay, I think it's just because I haven't finished that yet. Cool. Oh, missed an E. That'll look good. And I think that's because I missed an O. So that's great. We just fixed some of our problems here. All right, and we will continue. And so now the next thing is the vote. So let's go ahead and add in the vote function. So I'll make sure everything's viewable here. Function votes. Signed integer proposal. some checks so that's what the requires for just as a reminder and then logical negation so make sure that the weight is not zero basically so if they have no weight then they have uh, no right to vote and then we want to check do another check to see if the voter already voted. So then this function cannot be executed. And then now, what we want to do, so now that allowed, oops, I missed something here, make sure you all can see it, yep. Uh, so, I'm going to change this to unassigned. Perfect. And then, um, so now we need to count how many votes were given for each proposal. So the goal here is to look at the winning proposal.
everything up. So you can see. P. Great. So what this is doing is taking all the votes into account and adding them to the total number of vo votes to determine what the winning proposal actually is. And it looks like I made a mistake up here, I just noticed. So let's go ahead and fix this. And then I just did a typing error there. I think we're good. Did I miss something else? Let's see what this is saying. Expecting, oh, there we go. I think that should fix it, yep, great. Okay, so then now what we wanna know is which proposal won. So let me scroll up to the top here so you all can see it. And then we're going to call a new function, and the winning uh, winner name. External view, and then we want this to return that name. Winner name equals proposals and winning. Oops. <laughs> So I'm going to go ahead and save my work here and let's go through and just make sure we don't see any errors. I, when I'm trying to type and talk, I make a lot of errors. Even when I don't type and talk, I make errors. So let's just make sure everything looks good. Cool. So the next thing here, I'm going to connect to remix, remix d dash s dot. And so now we should be connecting to the terminal. There we go. All right, so let's switch over to Remix here. And what we want to do, if you recall, we want to connect to local host. Click Connect at the bottom. And then we should see our ballot. Great. Here it is. This is fun. So that is now ready to compile. So let's compile it. See if we can find this error real quick. Hmm. 
Hmm. There it is. Should say returns. What did we do wrong here? There we go. So I accidentally had capitalized the P and I forgot the S on my returns. I'm gonna go back over to the Visual Studio ID and make sure that updated here. Awesome, yeah, it updated. So they are connected. So we have a lowercase p here and then the S on the returns. So let's go back over to Remix and let's compile our ballot. Great. All right, so we have compiled the contract here, and we are ready to deploy, but you'll notice over here we need proposal names. And if you recall, we programmed it so that there are these 32 byte names, and so they need to be in these hexadecimal format. So I pulled a few names from Stack Exchange. I'm going to go ahead and just paste them into here for now, just for the demo. I will. Uh, in the next video, I'll add a contract so we can convert the uh, like a string to a hexadecimal name for the future. But for now, just for speeding this up, um, I added those proposal names. And then what you'll notice in here is our delegate. Let me move the screen here. Our delegate, our give voting right chairperson proposal votes and winner name and so for right now um, what we'll do is we'll just look at the chairperson and so the chairperson should be my test address which that looks correct so we can go up here and look at that and that looks right it's great and then and see winning proposal where names, voters, and proposals. And so if we click the down arrow on proposals, we could type in those specific proposal names, the address of the voters, we could click where name, uh, winner name, excuse me. There is no winner at this point. And then winning proposal, the winning proposal shows zero. And so this is where we're gonna stop today. We will continue to take a look at this. Uh, in uh, the next episode where I'll show you how to convert your proposal names to these addresses and then we can run through how this entire smart contract works. I hope you enjoyed this holiday special and I'm looking forward to learning more about Solidity together.